Hello, and welcome to Chem 233. This recorded webcast is the first recorded webcast for the course. This webcast will provide an overview of the course. First, my name is Dr. Sean Miller, and I will be your instructor for Chem 233. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that this recorded webcast is merely a summary of course structure and policy as outlined in the course syllabus. You are expected to read the course syllabus in its entirety and be familiar with its contents. This webcast is not a substitute for reading the course syllabus. For course announcements, please regularly check the Compass 2G course website and Piazza. We will talk about what Piazza is in a little bit. I do not send mass emails on a regular basis. I prefer announcements because they are a permanent location where you can always view the information I would like you to see. Please make sure you read the syllabus and check announcements on a regular basis. If you miss something important and it is located in either of those two locations, that's unfortunate. It is your responsibility to ensure that you are up to date on course information via announcements and the course syllabus. I suggest that you check for new announcements every day. If there is an emergency and I need you to know something immediately, I will send an email then. Chem233 has two main components. The first component consists of webcasts like the one you are watching now and the lecture period. This component of the course is focused on theory and problem solving. Via the webcast and lecture, we will discuss experiment background information, tips for performing an experiment, and work through practice problems. The second component of this course is the laboratory component. The laboratory component is focused on practical application of what you have learned and critical thinking. In this component of the course, you will perform experiments, collect data, and then draw conclusions and support those conclusions using the data that you have collected. After you finish this course, what should you have gotten out of this? Well, by the end of this course, you will be able to explain the theory behind standard organic chemistry techniques and instruments. You will be able to solve problems utilizing fundamental organic chemistry laboratory concepts. You will be able to predict the outcome of an experiment using knowledge of the theory behind an experiment. You will be able to execute basic organic chemistry laboratory procedures efficiently and safely. Be able to record relevant scientific data and observations. And finally, you will be able to draw conclusions supported by provided spectroscopic data or your own recorded laboratory data. That's a lot of goals. How will you practice achieving these goals? You will practice achieving these goals by first watching recorded webcasts and actively participating in the discussion formatted lectures. Let's talk about these webcasts and these lectures. Every experiment will have one or more webcasts associated with it. You are responsible for watching those webcasts prior to coming to the lecture period associated with that webcast. These webcasts, like the one you are watching now, are viewable on the Compass 2G course website and you can view them as many times as you wish. A typical webcast will present both the theoretical background information for a topic, as well as practical and safety considerations for the associated laboratory experiment. When watching these webcasts, it is highly recommended that you take notes like you would for any other lecture. You will find these notes useful when it comes time to, say, prepare for a post-lab quiz or for an exam. If these webcasts are the primary method for communicating information to you, what are we going to use the lecture periods for? Attendance at lecture periods is optional. What we will be doing in these lecture periods, if you decide to attend, is we're going to treat them like we would a discussion section where we will work through worksheets that you will find on the Compass 2G course website. These worksheets will be in combination of multiple choice questions, free response questions, and other practice problems and calculations. If you decide to come to lecture, please remember to bring your clickers and to print out and bring the worksheet associated with that lecture ahead of time. Prior to coming to lecture, you also have the option of completing a survey on the Compass 2G course website. This survey is designed to solicit feedback from you on what topics you feel you are most uncomfortable with. Your responses will help guide me on what to focus on in the lecture periods. For the laboratory portion of this course, you will practice by preparing for lab at home via reading the lab manual, completing the pre-lab quiz for that experiment, and completing your pre-lab notebook. You will arrive on time every lab in proper attire, and then you will perform laboratory experiments. When preparing for and performing these laboratory experiments, you will do this in the mindset of, what am I doing and why? Instead of, I'm just going to go and do what the procedure tells me to do. 
Everything you do in an experiment has a purpose, and if you can rationalize what each step is supposed to do, that means you have a solid understanding of the theory behind that experiment. How will you prepare for these labs? First, we must talk about what types of labs you will perform in this course. The first type of lab is what we call a dry lab. As you can see in the schedule in the course syllabus, the first three experiments in this course are dry labs. These dry labs are labs that will be on spectroscopy. These dry labs will not be performed in your assigned laboratory room. Instead, these will be done in assigned classrooms, working in small groups to solve spectroscopy problems. That will be located in provided worksheets. The other type of lab is a wet lab. A wet lab is what you might think of as a traditional organic chemistry lab, where you will enter a laboratory and perform some chemistry. The procedures for these experiments are located in your lab manual. Now that we know the two types of labs that you will be performing, how do you prepare for each of them? For a dry lab, you will watch the webcast or webcast associated with that experiment and take notes. For a dry lab, there is no pre-lab notebook. There is, however, a pre-lab quiz, which you can find online on the Compass 2G course website. It is important that you complete that pre-lab quiz. If you do not complete the pre-lab quiz, you will not be allowed to perform the experiment. As mentioned previously, these dry labs will not be performed in your normal laboratory room. Before going to your dry lab, you will need to identify the time and classroom you will be performing the dry lab in by looking at the schedule posted on the Compass 2G course website. You can do this via using your lab section number and or your TA's name. Preparing for a wet lab is similar. As with the dry labs, you will watch the associated webcast or webcast for an experiment and take notes. You will then read the lab manual pages for the experiment while thinking about how the procedure lines up with the webcast. If you can explain how each step fits with the theory discussed in the webcast, then you have a good handle on what the experiment is trying to do. You will also watch any of the assigned technical videos located on Compass. These technical videos will show you how to perform each technique ahead of time. For example, in the TLC experiment, there is a technical video that will show you how to set up a TLC plate. That way you have some idea as to what to do once you actually get into lab. For a wet lab, there is a pre-lab notebook and you must complete that pre-lab notebook according to the instructions in your lab manual. You must complete the pre-lab quiz associated with that experiment on Compass. If you do not complete either your pre-lab notebook or your pre-lab quiz, you will not be allowed to perform the experiment. Because this is a technical course where a significant portion of your grade comes from performing experiments, attendance at each lab is required. Makeup labs are difficult to arrange. Do not assume that you will be given the opportunity. If you know ahead of time that there will be a conflict due to religious or other accepted reasons, it may be possible to arrange for a makeup experiment if you provide enough notice, at least one week in advance. It is important to arrive to lab early. At the beginning of every lab period, your TA will give a short lecture just to go over the highlights of what the lab you will be performing is, some tips to perform it efficiently and safely, things like that. You must be there for that lecture. If you arrive during the lecture, you will receive a 10-point deduction from your lab notebook score. If you arrive after the lecture is completed, you will be prevented from performing the experiment at all, even if you completed the pre-lab quiz and the pre-lab notebook. That's a lot of things to practice, and mostly on your own. What kind of support will you be given? The final part of practicing for any course is getting help and discussing the material with other people. And you will do that with your peers, with myself and your TA, online using Piazza, or in person at office hours, or via email. In this course, you have the option of using Piazza. You can find enrollment instructions for Piazza in the course syllabus. Piazza is a free service, which you can think about as a sort of course forum, or a course wiki. How it works is, you have a question, and then you can post a question that is viewable to everyone. It is also answerable by everyone. That means that me, the TAs, and your peers can answer that question, making it more likely that you will get a rapid response. It also means that because these questions are public, that if someone has already asked the question you were going to ask and received an answer, you can simply look at their question and their answer to solve your problem. And posting on Piazza, if you wish, you may post anonymously to your peers. Be aware that instructors, which includes myself and your TAs, will always know who you are when you post, so ensure that you are polite and follow the rules for posting on Piazza. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Now, this is a two-way street. 
if you are asking questions, you should also be trying to answer questions. Be active and help each other out. If you're a little nervous about trusting the answers from your peers, don't worry, both me and the TAs will be checking every answer that gets posted and ensure that the information you are receiving is good information. Let's say you really want some face-to-face -face time with either me or your TA. You can always go to office hours. My office hours are located on the course syllabus and your TA's office hours will be posted online within the first week of the course. If you can't come to office hours but would still like some face-to-face -face time, email me or your TA and we will do our best to ensure that we can schedule a private meeting. And finally, of course, there's always the old standby of email. You can always email either myself or your TA directly if you have a question. If there are personal concerns you need to discuss with me, use email and not Piazza. Contact me directly. So far, we've discussed what you should be getting out of the course when you're done, how you will practice achieving those goals. Now we're going to talk about how will you be assessed? How will your grade be assigned? You'll be assessed using a number of different tools, the first of which is a getting started quiz. This getting started quiz is designed to assess how well you understand course policies and laboratory safety. To prepare for this quiz, you should be familiar with the course syllabus, the lab manual, and the introductory webcast, being this webcast, the lab safety webcast, and the fundamentals webcast. Some of the questions in this quiz will have answers that are not located in any of these sources. Part of working in a lab is having some common sense, and you should expect questions that will test your common sense. This quiz is graded at the time of submission. In other words, it is graded immediately after you submit it, and you can take it as many times as you wish in order to maximize your score prior to the deadline. There will also be a pre and post lab quiz for every experiment in this course. For every lab experiment, there will be one short electronic pre lab quiz that you will find on Compass. This pre lab quiz is primarily designed to be a safety check to ensure that you have a fundamental understanding of the experiment. That means knowing what the procedure is going to be and knowing the safety considerations for the experiment. If you have prepared for the experiment properly by watching the webcast and completing your pre lab notebook, the quiz should take you no more than five minutes. These quizzes are very short and are designed to be easy to complete if you've done your homework. You can use your notes for these quizzes, but you must work alone. For each quiz, you will be allowed two attempts. The second attempt is designed to accommodate for any technical difficulties you encounter, for example, logging out accidentally or submitting early. Be aware that the final attempt will always be the attempt that is accepted. If you successfully complete the quiz once and then take the quiz again to try and maximize your score, but then get a lower score, that's the one that's gonna count. The second attempt will always be the one accepted, even if that score is lower than the first one. Each lab experiment will also have one electronic post-lab quiz that you will find on Compass. The post-lab quiz is designed to test something different. The post-lab quiz is designed to assess your knowledge and understanding of the theory and practical aspects of the experiment. You should treat these post-lab quizzes as practice for the exam. This means that you should be comfortable with the materials in the webcast. And if you have taken notes, you may use those on this quiz. As with the pre lab quizzes, you will be allowed two attempts to complete this quiz, again to accommodate any technical difficulties you encounter. And once again, the second attempt will always be the one that is accepted, even if that second attempt score is lower than your first attempt score. As this is a lab course, you'll also be assessed based on your lab experiments and your submitted lab notebooks. What you submit will depend on the type of lab. For dry labs, it's pretty simple. You will be given a packet to work on, and once you complete your packet, you will submit that packet to your TA for grading before the end of the period. For wet labs, you will be submitting your lab notebook pages. This will include the pre-lab work you put into your notebook before the lab, as well as the notes you take during the lab and the conclusions you write after the lab. Taken as a whole, the notes in your lab notebook should be complete enough that any other student could repeat your procedure exactly as you did and get the same results. This means recording things like actual amounts of material used, writing down any deviations from the procedure that you made, and specific data and observations that are requested. Instructions on what to record can be found in your lab manual. You will also find in your lab manual an example pre-lab and post-lab notebook. Look at those and use them to guide you on what you should be including and how your notebook should look like. Once you've completed an experiment, you will then take the perforated pages, which for most of you will be the white pages of your lab notebook and submit them to your TA. 
Your TA will grade these notebook pages based on completeness, the recording of relevant data in the correct format, correct calculations and reporting of results based on that data, quality data analysis, and so on. A description of what we are looking for can be found in your lab manual. The rubric that will be used to grade your first wet experiment will be publicly posted on the Compass 2G course website. This will be the only rubric that will be publicly posted. However, the format for the rubrics for all subsequent wet experiments will be roughly the same. Feel free to use this rubric as a reference as you proceed through the course. Finally, there will be two exams and a laboratory practical. Exams will be held as shown in the schedule in the course syllabus. These will be traditional exams. You should expect multiple choice questions, few response questions, and other types of questions that are specific to organic chemistry. The laboratory practical is different. The laboratory practical will be designed to test your practical skills, your ability to perform organic chemistry laboratory techniques. These will be held as shown in the course syllabus during your normal lab period. We have just finished discussing all the many bits and pieces that will combine to make up your grade. The getting started quiz, your pre-lab quizzes, your post-lab quizzes, your lab notebooks, the two exams, and your lab practical. Your letter grades for this course will be assigned as described in the course syllabus. The lowest pre-lab quiz, the lowest post-lab quiz, and the lowest experimental scores will be dropped at the end of the course. These do not all have to be from the same experiment. For this course, there will not be what you might call a curve for most components. For the experimental scores and the experimental scores only, there may be a standardization if and only if there is a significant difference in grading between TAs. So far in this webcast, we have discussed many different aspects to this course. Webcasts, lecture periods, lab periods, quizzes, notebooks, how does it all fit together? Here's a diagram which hopefully will help you see how everything in this course fits together. For the lecture portion of this course, you will watch webcasts and read the lab manual. Having done that, you then have the option of attending lecture sessions where we will work through problems. For the lab portion of this course, you will watch webcasts and read the lab manual, and then, having done that, you will complete your pre-lab quiz and your pre-lab notebook, which will then allow you to perform the associated experiment. Once that experiment is done, you will then need to complete a post-lab quiz. The material in your post-lab quiz will be a combination of material from the webcasts and material from the experiment itself. Notice how in this diagram, the arrow leading from the lecture portion of the course is larger than the arrow leading from the experimental portion of the course. That is by design. The post-lab quizzes will be comprised primarily of material from the webcasts, because your post-lab quiz is designed to test your understanding of the theory and fundamentals behind each experiment. The optional lecture sessions will solve problems that will help you prepare for these post-lab quizzes. In the same way that the optional lecture sessions prepare you for the post-lab quizzes, the post-lab quizzes are designed to prepare you for the exams. One feeds into the other. The lab portion of the course is similar. Complete the pre-lab quiz and pre-lab notebook to prepare you for performing the experiments, which in turn prepare you for performing the laboratory practical. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the first webcast for this course. Remember, there are a few other webcasts that you need to watch. Remember to watch the Intro to Spectroscopy webcast before coming to the first lecture session. You should also watch the Fundamentals webcast if you are concurrently taking Chem 232 or need a refresher on Organic Chemistry Fundamentals. You also have a Lab Safety webcast to watch. You should watch that before the due date for the Getting Started quiz. You will find some of the material in that webcast in the Getting Started quiz.